Hey y'all, this is Tittle, and this is a Milkshape 3D tutorial focusing on how to use the Texture Coordinate Editor in order to combine textures. I'll also be reviewing how to assign materials and textures to a model. I'm going to be working with the Jill model from Resident Evil 1 on the GameCube. Uh, she comes in two object files. Sometimes when you import models into, uh, into Milkshape, they appear black for some reason. You can just select everything and uh, you can either weld it. Sometimes you just move it forward and backward and that usually fixes it. Alright, so I'm going to work with this part of the model first. Um, you, sometimes you just this is all you get. You just get a bunch of groups of meshes and then you have no materials at all. Um, what you would do is basically, I can double click to select that part of the model, and here it looks like it's the scalp, so you can actually rename it. Press rename, and that's renamed. And I double click to deselect, and then I select the next part, and that looks like it's part of the chest. Actually, I can set this to wireframe. Let's make it better. This is part of the chest and arms, really. Gonna keep going down. This is holster. Okay, I might stop stop talking at some points just if it's something that uh, I think is obvious what I'm doing. This this is gonna take a while because the model has almost 30 parts and about 15 textures. You can just keep double clicking and keep renaming the parts like you know I think this is unnecessary so to make things easier for you later If anyone's wondering, the music is from Uncharted 2, probably my favorite game of all time. Um, this model has two, two files, so I'm going to import the next part of the file. Uh, it's kind of hard to select that part of the model, so I'm going to just... Um, this is the, where the next model starts, so I'm just going to keep double clicking to select it all. Okay, that should be all of it.
All right, that's every part of the model. And um, what I like to do is uh, like order this a bit in terms of keeping the face parts on the, the head parts lower and then the body parts up. So I'm just going to order that a bit. Okay, I believe that's it. And uh, now I'm going to um, start assigning textures to this model. So in order to do that, I need to start um, start adding material. So I'm going to press New Material, creates Material 01, and uh, let's look inside her. Um, the fr I just I usually go alphabetical. First file that's there is chest. So I'm going to double click that. It's selected here, and also this should change color for that for that texture. I'm going to rename the material to chest and um, because uh, I believe double click that um, you have to select the entire group when you're assigning a material so double click it to select it and then um, you can just double click here it does the same thing as assigning so I just double click and it's assigned to that part of the body uh, I'm going to continue adding the next material so now it's material 2 and it looks like the next one is ear. And there should be one part for the ear. Okay. And her ear is textured now. Next file. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and add all of these. Uh, part of the reason I chose this model is because it has so many materials, it has 15 materials. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start assigning them. So, holster is actually under part of the shirt accessories, skirt accessories picture. Uh, this is always fun seeing the models start filling in.
Part of the reason I'm able to work this fast is because I have knowledge of where parts of the model like, like, you know, sometimes if you don't know, you just keep double clicking and finding out where parts of the. To put, where they should be mapped to. Parts of these meshes, where they should be mapped to. Is this um, model experience? Sometimes you just take, take a peek at all the images and then you have an idea. You can select two at once, and then you can assign both. All right, that's everything. Um, the mod, I believe the, you'll notice it'll say no material if it's not assigned to anything. Basically, all parts of the model are assigned. And let's take a look at the model statistics. It's 29 groups of meshes and 15 materials. And um, let's take um, let's take a look at all everything. In order to actually see something in the texture coordinator, which is found here, you need to have the that part of the model selected. Um, you know, like you can double click and then you can click here and then click chest, and that's when you actually see how it's assigned. Looks like there's a little error on this file, but it doesn't seem to be affecting the model that much. Um, sometimes that happens during the ripping process. Um, and, but I want to be able to see everything all at once, so I'm just going to press Ctrl A to select everything, and then on uh, texture coordinator, I'm going to start from the top. I just want to see all the textures. So I'm just pressing, because I have this selected here, I'm just pressing down. And I can go through the entire model and see how the meshes are assigned, mapped to the textures. Alright, so that's everything. Now, um, the real goal of this tutorial is to... Um, so there are some times when, during modding, or, um, certain game engines can't handle this many materials for assigned to one model. Um, in this case, 15. My goal right now is to bring that number down to two textures. So in order to do that, um, there are two ways. One is using, um, I guess the faster, easier way is to use Blender 2.49B, which is still available and uh, for free. And the other method is um, using some sort of graphic imaging Im image editor and uh, using the texture coordinator, like using this, uh, the, you know, the milkshapes tools. So um, let me just go ahead and save this. Alright, and um, first thing in order to 
reduce all these textures to to one or two textures is uh, you should take a look at all the text uh, texture files. So let's do that. Open up Photoshop. All right. So these are all the texture files. I'm gonna go ahead and open all of them. I mean, this is the Photoshop method. Um, I mean, I'm not sure how GIMP is used, and you know, I'm just looking through them, seeing, seeing what, seeing what's what. Um, in order to do what I'm about to do, um, and a lot of game engines don't accept textures that are not a, for a standard size. For example, this texture is um, 256 by 300, and that's very awkward. Um, no, normally uh, textures are are in factors of two. So I'm just gonna go ahead and resize this to 256. This one, so now it's more like a square shape. Like you're going for either squares or rectangles. So um, so that's changed now. I mean, there are a number of um, images that I'm probably gonna need to change. Like most of the time, you'll find models that have standard sizes, but some you know like you run into a couple that aren't, and that's when you should change them right away. So this is fine, 256 by 128, it's fine. This I believe is 256. This is, looks like 64. Yeah, uh, yeah, 1264. This one looks awkward because it sh this should be 512. So I'm just making it a square. So I took a look at all these files, and um, see this file actually has an al um, this is the eyelash file, and it has an alpha value. And um, basically, um, you can either you know, Targa usually this is how Targa presents it. But in order to work with it, I'm going to turn it into a PNG using this alpha. Alpha. So the way to do this would be to copy that. Then I'm going to actually copy this first. Delete that. I could add a mask. The mask is here, actually. So let's take a look at that. Delete the alpha. So now I can work with this. Paste it, and now it's more like a standard file. Like with transparency. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save that as a PNG because I think you can handle it better. Okay. Uh, also, looks like the alpha value for the hair was was also was separated. Um, this this one happens to have a very simple looking alpha, but I think this is supposed to be the alpha for the hair. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this alpha because it doesn't look right. And then let's copy that. going to add a mask. Make the mask visible. So I can edit it. Copy this. Paste. Turn the RPG back on. And now that looks more normal. Another strange thing about this one is not, it's not right size format either. Change that. All right. Just put that in. Okay, I'm gonna save that as hair PNG. This just makes it easier to work with later. All right, that's. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just going through all the sizes, making sure that it all looks good. This looks a little weird. One should be 128. And usually, when I consolidate, in this case, um, I'm going to separate it so I'm going to have parts of the body together and then parts of the head together. I mean, that's just, I mean you can choose however you want to consolidate, but my goal is to get it to two, 
and have all the parts of the head together and, and all the parts of the body together. So you just want to make sure that all, all these are factors of two. Makes the remapping and uh, processing process easier. Okay, I think that's everything. So that was a standard size, standard size. Yeah, this was standard size. That was changed. This was changed. This was changed. This was changed. 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 This was the same. And this was the resize as well. All right. Um, just taking a look at all the textures again. So they're all here. And um, I'm going to, um, so I, I, these are the ones I replaced, so I'm just going to delete the extra files for those. And uh, what I'm going to do is have all of them open just so I have them, like, I had. So this is part of the head, this is part of the head, this is also part of the head. And you, know, you start formulating an idea of how you think you should, you know, map them out on your image. All right, for this one, I'm gonna want as part of the chest. That's how I put this here, put this here, then put this here, put this here. Okay, I think uh, a 512 image would do for this. So I'm going to make a new texture image for it. Have it transparent in the background. And then I'm going to start adding the body parts to it. Um, for this one, it's simple. Just copy paste and then uh, Photoshop just snaps to the corners, so that's usually helpful. Uh, the size for that skirt wasn't changed. I mean, just do that now. Okay, so that's how I want the the body texture to look. And then I'm just gonna, because there's not really that much alpha, alpha meaning transparency in this image, I'm just gonna fill in like the remainder of it. Here you can merge visible. 
And I'm going to go ahead and save that as... Uh, no, I'm going to save the Targo for this. Alright, so that's the Jill body file, so now I'm going to work on the Jill head file. Um, seems to be, I'm trying to picture how I'm going to put it together. Something like that. Mm, yeah, it'll, it'll come together. Alright, um, this one looks like it needs to be about... 1024, height of 15, okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this in. Like, you know, like Photoshop has all these guides where it snaps to. Um, but when it gets a bit more complicated with transparency, it gets harder. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use the place function. When I place it and I'm gonna grab the hair and um, it, this is, it, it's a bit more better to accurately place something in, in place. It's, it's, it snaps better. But over here, you can set like the pivot point practically to the corner, and then it shows you some values up here. So when I snap it into place, it actually shows me that it's like 512, like, you know, it's basically perfectly positioned. So I use the place function a lot sometimes when I'm using transparent files. It works, it works even more easily with, um, let me go ahead and place it. Um, it works more easily with more um, opaque files, but um, transparency images make it very difficult to work with. And because the transparency is still there, I'm also going to place the eye. Mark the corner. Yeah, so it's like 512 over 256. Like these things are going to be, these things matter. You can't just place it anywhere. It makes it makes it more difficult for yourself later. Like you want to have an accurate remapping. So what's left? Let me get the ear. All right, and that's everything for the head, just barely fit. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plan the merge visible. This one has some more complicated alpha. So you can save this as a PNG or a, D or a DDS accordingly. If, uh, I'm gonna save it as both PNG
I'm also going to go ahead and save it as uh, DDS. Sometimes certain games and engines require that. And in this case, you would um, you use DTX for interpolated alpha. One bit is very simple alpha, and then this is the most complicated. I figured that here is pretty complicated, so. Okay. So now I have these files made. Um, I'm gonna. So now we can go back into Milkshape. This is blank. All right. So um, in here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just. I guess just um, I can go ahead and delete all these materials, and I'm only gonna make the two new ones that I made. So this is Jill Body. Sign those. All right, so now I can go through, um, like, you remember where I signed everything, and then go ahead and assign it. So, um, most of the head I had down here, so I'm going to go ahead and sign that. Starting about here. Obviously it's going to look messed up, but we're going to remap it later. I'm just double-clicking all of them. That's the body, okay. I'm gonna select all, and I'm gonna go into the texture coordinator editor. Alright. So if you recall, the the chest used to be just this portion of the image, and it was a rectangle. Um, one thing you want to note is where the pivot point is. In this case, it's in the zero zero corner. Make sure it's there. You can press the P to actually to actually do it. Because I selected everything, it's already everything's already selected. What I have to do now is basically let's make it a rectangle first. And in order to do that, this is the horizontal, and this is a vertical component. So it'll be like X and Y. So X is this way and then Y is this way. So I need I need to make it from a square to a rectangle. So in this case I'm gonna make it 50% smaller. So now um, it's like it, up, it went towards the pivot point like a small um, scaled. So now I'm going to um, scale it and 50% for both X and Y. And there you go, it's already map to the to the chest. Now moving on. The holster is actually part of this part of the mesh and is actually it was a square, that part of the texture. So um, make sure the pivot's still zero. I'm gonna scale it down because it's it's just a fifty percent smaller square. So I'm just gonna scale it and but it's in this part because it's pivoting towards there. I need to move it over here, but I need to move it by a factor of half. So this is in the move, press 0.5 and move, and there you go, it's right there. Moving on, this is also part of the holster area, so I'm going to do something very similar. It was a square before. Same process. This is, um, over, this should be over here, and uh, I'm going to scale it, make it rectangle first and then scale both parts of it. Now I need to move it down. I need to move it down 25% of the image. So I need to move it down. This is the down factor. Positive will go down this way. This is the skirt. It should be over here. 
Oh no, so this is the skirt. Oh, the skirt's gonna be actually over here. And this was part of that image, so it's gonna be a square. Right, move it over. There you go. This is the leg. The leg is gonna go over here, and this is. It should be a, a red, a, a, a long rectangle, a standing rectangle. So let me scale that that way first. Okay. Now let me reduce its size. Now I need to move it down over here. Uh, it's gonna be. I know this goes over here, so uh, you need to operate on it as if it's uh, it needs to be a, rect uh, a rectangle first, and then scale the entire thing. Move it down 25 percent. So it just comes down to just memorizing and understanding the model, like the texture, and what it's expecting, and uh, expecting to be, and moving it to that part of the model, part of the texture. The finger should be over here, and that part of the model is expecting a rectangle, so let's make it a rectangle first. Okay, now I need to make it significantly small. I can set it to half and just keep pressing until it looks about the right size. It looks right, I just need to move it over here now. It's gonna go down 50%. Okay, now I'm gonna move it only sideways. Um, it's, it's gonna be one, it's like four times, so let's make it 25. There you go. Um, this is uh, one of the tougher ones to actually map out that this long. I mean, there's so many parts of the file. But you know, like, when it's a couple, only a few, it's quite easy, simple. I just figured I should show the most complicated version of this so that, can, you know, hopefully your model is easier to work with. Alright, we're moving on to this part of the model. Um, the tongue, I believe, was already a rectangle. Oh no, it's a square, so let me make this a square. And this became a rectangle, so in this case, I need to turn this back into a square. Then we're going to scale it by 0.5. Okay, and I need to move it. Looks like, like this is like the seventh eighth of it, so one eighth of, of 100%. I think it's like 125, so I'm going to move it 125. There you go, and then move it down 50%. Okay, teeth over here, it's already a, a rectangle, so I'm just going to scale down till it looks about the right size. I think that's right. And do something similar. And then move it down. Uh, I'm just going to do 125. 125 is safe, and then. Keep 
sometimes I do this, you pop out a calculator. <laughs> but with more experience, you just start remembering these numbers. This one needs to be turned into a square first. Then it needs to be really small. Okay. This one just needs to be squareified. Okay, this is actually part of the rectangle, and I need to reduce its size, then move it over, it needs to be about here, it's going to move over about 50% part of the hair. Just try to remember what part of the mesh it's on, what part of the texture it is, and just treat it as you would any part that would be, it look like this. As long as you don't move the pivot point, things are fine. Okay, I believe that's everything. Can get out of here. And now that's pretty much how it's done. You um, everything is now reassigned to just two textures. Take a look at everything. So you can just go down, and now it's all. This reduces the draw call for at a game, any game that could be using this model. Okay, so that's how it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And uh, in another video, I'm going to go ahead and show how this is done. This is done in a much shortcut method in Blender, uh, 2.5, uh, 2.449B. And um, sometimes the reason I show this method is because sometimes you already rigged the model to a skeleton, and the other method doesn't work well with that method. So I figured, you know, I should teach how to do it manually. It's more difficult, but at the same time, I feel like it's like a puzzle. And you know, it involves some level of math. And um, just to show, just as function, of, I'm not sure if I'll be able to show it later. I just want to show how to like, um, you, you know, like their time. What what moves the pivot point? And um, uh, if you do, the, you can hold control, and you notice like where you click, that's where the pivot point ends up moving. If you notice it moved from that zero zero location, click pivot, and then you'll notice where it actually is. Set it to zero and zero and press and then that's how you see it. You can also uh, adjust the size of the image you're looking at um, you know in order if you want to zoom in a bit more. Okay, and sometimes I, I just lose the image during that process. But um, you just press the fit selection. It'll blow up your screen. Basically this is the default and then you know you can mess around. Um, but yeah and uh, set the pivot back. And yeah so that's how you work with this and uh, let's say I Let's say you're making your own textures and you know you want to mess around or set everything to one color. You know, you can move the pivot point to like say you're about here and then scale as necessary, like hey you want everything to fit into one small blue square and have that part of the body. 
like you know and then you can move it to that part of the blue square you know you can do whatever you have to do you can also like um you know like essentially like redraw the model and like you know at whatever angle you want it to come at it come in at and uh, you know based on the model the view and then you know you could paint and texture the model uh, accordingly um you know and then you know you can scale this and you know do what you have to do and like you know like paint however you want so that's how you use the texture coordinate editor and yeah, that's really messed up now I can just, uh, I'll just reload my phone. Yeah, so, um, so that's the milk shape method. Okay, mm I'm gonna go ahead and show the other method really quickly. Hold that. Manual. Okay, I just wanted to describe the, the Blender 2.49. Um, process. Um, again, just make sure that uh, you assign um, like the parts of the materials, uh, the, ma the mesh to the materials. Like make sure that's already part of, and then re-export the wavefront object. And then you can split this however you want in terms of like two parts or one part even. Um, just showing that like the head, the object file already has textures assigned to it. So basically, um, um, so those are the updated object files, and then we we wanted to combine the textures. So we're loading up Blender 2.49b. Uh, that loaded really quickly. You can go ahead and delete that cube. Um, import in your 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 wavefront object. In this case, it's body, different object. Here, set the clamp sale to zero, so when you recombine the two object files that we're going to create, um, it doesn't like uh, improperly align. So here it is. Um, you right-click on it to select. Open up the UV map editor, image editor. Here, um, there's a function here that got taken out of the new version of Blender's Blender. Consolidate into one image. If you press that. You can uh, name the, this is going to create a, a PNG image, I'm going to call it Jill Body, and uh, you can set the size of the image as well. Once you press OK, it's going to create a PNG file, and it actually has transparency in case you can't see it here, but um, it already created, created it. it. It goes in a particular folder in your um, app data, um, in your username app data. Uh, I believe roaming blender foundation dot blender folder and it already made it and then basically um, they, um, all you need to do is export the new updated uh, object file so here it is in the app data roaming blender foundation dot blender folder and you can go ahead and just name um, whatever you want this object file to be called like an updated body body image um, object Export that out, and uh, here I usually change it to triangulate because my milkshake prefers triangles. Export, and that got exported. Now I'm going to do the other part of the body, which is the head, and let me get rid of this again. Import, and uh, let's go back to that folder, and the head over here. Import, and again, I'm clamping, set the clamp to zero. Import. There's the part of the head, right click on it, image editor, consolidate into one image, Jill head, okay, it's all set, press OK, it's going to build it right in front of you. Um, sometimes it does something like this, um, uh, you know, it's either way, like if, if I, I didn't, it didn't reduce the quality of the image, like it used, like I find this, this, this automatic tool. It doesn't. It preserves the image quality, as opposed to there were times when I resized this and resized this. But you know, like uh, this is I, I would imagine even more effective. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. It already created that PNG file, so I'm going to export out the updated object head file. I'm gonna call it uh, Joel Head and export. Again, triangulate, export. So now I should have those two, um, those new um, object files, including the PNG files, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and import them into 
you know, milkshake again. Import, wait for an object, and so these, they're here. I moved them from the app data folder. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the body first. Uh, it's all that black thing, I'm just gonna move it forward and back. Well, back and forward. Sometimes it's a little dark, but that's, it's usually not a problem once you put it in game. Um, over here, I'm gonna, so for some reason, it's still like numerous files, even though they're all referred to the same image. I'm gonna double click. And now they're all set to this one texture. Go ahead and name it um, Jill Body. Name. Okay, now I can go ahead and bring in the head part. Okay, it's there. I'm going to select all of it. Um, one thing is, like, when you do this method, it creates these two default parts, um, default named meshes. The first one, the first one you import in, actually has um, a, a mesh assigned to it. The second one actually has nothing assigned to it. Like I've noticed after doing this a number of times, so I just usually just delete it. And then you can select all parts of the head. And then um, you can just move it. Uh, you can always weld it too. Okay, so now our head is back, and uh, I'm gonna delete these extra parts of it. Like extra materials, whoops. Okay. All right, so, and that was the automatic method um, using uh, Blender 2.49. Basically you separate, I mean either, you can even send out the whole object file, uh, um, or even to you know separate which parts of the group like you know you can save the you can delete groups that you don't want in one part of the file and then um, um, and then export out two different object files and then bring them back in together or either or away basically um, you know however many textures you want to combine using this function um, but yeah it basically does the same thing um, to an extent better the reason I showed the manual method is there are many times when you already rigged a model, and it becomes harder to um, to remap it. Basically, it, you can, you should do this if you're using this method. You should do it right in the beginning, before you start rigging the model to a skeleton. So um, yeah, so that's the automatic method. Basically, two two ways to go about doing the same thing. <sighs> yep. Okay. All right. So that was uh, hopefully you guys learned something today about uh, working with the uh, texture coordinate editor and just about models and uh, materials in general. Um, um, I still personally prefer the manual method. I mean, to me it's almost fun, like puzzle-like. Uh, and this one, this is like a shortcut and like, you know, it's, it's annoying in its own way too. But that said, it is a lot faster and gets the job done really quickly. Sometimes if there a case that um, the manual method is just too difficult, like some sometimes, uh, Sometimes you run into models where, like, uh, like uh, hold on, let me select everything. Sometimes you run into models that have like, like parts of the hair are like, um, like in this case, I'll just uh, simulate it. Basically, parts of the hair are like, like, like far away. <laughs> like in this case, I probably moved down. Like they're over here. They're like, you know, they're um, sometimes like different parts of the hair are like in different areas. And then it just becomes annoying to work with. Like if you find piece of uh, part of the thing there, you can press, you know, you bring it, bring it back to one, and then. But sometimes it's like spread out all the way left and right. If it just gets too annoying, I use this this method, the Blender method. I mean, yeah, it can be done manually too, but sometimes maybe you're not, you don't feel as confident about your accuracy. Um, and the Blender method will work with something like this too, like when when the meshes, when the when the it's not. Because sometimes these textures they mirror in, in, in the engine, in the game engines, and in 3D engines. So basically, sometimes they reflect too. But the point is that um, sometimes they're mapped this way, and it means the same thing. But you know, if you want to see where it's really supposed to go, you know, you just just move it on top. All right, um, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go over those things. Alrighty then, take care. This is still signing off.